Good morning, everybody. Welcome to day two of Apple's 2006 Worldwide Developer Conference. I'm Chris Espinosa. I'm the head of the user experience group in the Xcode development tools team. And I'm here to welcome you to Xcode, Apple's IDE. Our objective this morning is to orient you to the Xcode suite of tools to highlight some of the similarities and differences between Xcode and other tools you may be experienced with and to answer some of the common questions you're going to encounter as first-time users of Xcode. If you are not a first-time user of Xcode, now would be an excellent time to deplane. Um, if you are experienced with using Xcode, um, I suggest going to the Coco session in the next room or please, please, please downstairs to how to file a good bug report. That will help us much more than you're sitting in here learning the rudiments of Xcode. So if you're still with me, that means that you probably have not used the Xcode tools extensively before. You may not be familiar with the Xcode tools at all. You may be a newcomer to the Mac OS X development environment altogether. So I want to do a little show of hands of where you're coming from. Which of these do you recognize? Um, how many people are more experienced in the Visual Studio, Visual C++ development environment? Okay, good number. The mug in the middle is the um, Emacs cheat sheet. How many of you are primarily Emacs terminal makefile developers? Great, that's where I figured it. And, and how many people have uh, experience in the Eclipse development environment? Good, good mix. How many are Code Warrior refugees? Figured. So um, many of you, it looks like, from either Visual Studio or from Emacs or Code Warrior, uh, know what an IDE is and what the benefits of having an integrated development environment are. Uh, if you've only used um, the GNU tools or uh, command line tools to develop, an IDE may seem new to you. Um, what we give you with the Xcode IDE is actually the best of both worlds. It's the graphic user interface that you're familiar with as a user, plus the full power of the back-end tools that you get using the command line. Uh, the IDE integrates, and that's what the I in IDE is, it integrates a lot of different functions, not just the editing and building, but it's editing, building, debugging, source code management, visual modeling, documentation reference. A lot of things are packed into one application, and there are bridges to other applications that allow you to do, for example, interface design as well. And Apple's IDE is different in that it guides you specifically to developing Mac OS X applications. While in many respects it's a generic, you know, build, link, debug development environment, there are a lot of things all over Xcode which guide you to developing Mac OS X specific applications. The first questions you probably have if you're approaching the Mac OS X platform as a developer is, well, where are my tools? Well, you know, if you're a Microsoft developer, you go and buy Visual Studio. If you are an Eclipse developer, you download Eclipse. If you're a Mac OS X developer, what do you do? Well, the good news is, out of the box, with every single Macintosh we've ever sold with Mac OS X on it, and with every copy of Mac OS X at retail, the developer tools are included. With every copy, there's nothing to buy, there's nothing to download. You boot up your machine or you put in your installation disk and there is a disk image of the developer tools right there on the hard disk or right there on the DVD. You double click that disk image and you get the installer for the developer tools. If you want to upgrade, you go to uh, Apple Developer Connection, ADC, and you can download the latest tools. The current tools up there is Xcode 2.3. We just introduced 2.4 yesterday. It's not up on the website yet, but it can be downloaded from the servers here at the show. We're going to be using Xcode 2.3 for the demonstration today. When you install developer tools, something subtle happens to the top level of your hard disk you get a folder called developer. Most of the developer tools are there. And if you want to start with the Xcode IDE or any of the other tools, you just double click that. Some of the applications are at the top level, others are buried within it, but most of the things that you want to use as a developer will be found inside the top level developer folder on your hard disk after installation. But there's a lot that goes other places too. Let's take a look. In the developer folder, you see a top-level about document, a PDF that you can read. 
the reference library, which is all of the documentation, we'll show you how to get to it, the applications, which is where Xcode is, then there's documentation and a lot of examples, ton of sample code in examples, uh, some bundle, some headers, some bundles. Notice the um, SDKs folder here. The, that's the software development kits for Mac OS X. That is where the headers and link libraries are that you'll be using in the projects you create. We'll talk a little bit more about those later. But there's more in other places. If you're a traditional Unix developer, you understand that slash user is where most of your developer stuff goes. Um, when you install Mac OS X, a large number of Unix utilities and tools are included, but not all of the development utilities. When you install Xcode tools, all of the development utilities are added in, including the uh, Unix header files in user include, the link libraries and runtime libraries in user lib, and all of the uh, tools including the compilers in user bin. These are the typical places they are in a Unix or Linux development environment, and you'll find them there. The third place in the Mac OS X idiom is in the library folder, and the library folder is your machine configuration. It's where you put machine-specific stuff, and when you install the Xcode tools, your machine-specific plugins and configuration go in slash library. They're buried in a folder called application support slash apple slash developer tools, and there are a bunch of templates, bunch of plugins, bunch of configuration scripts. When you get to be an advanced Xcode user, you will find your configuration information, you will find your customization goes on in that folder. So let's take a quick tour of the Xcode IDE. Xcode has three different layouts, and you pick one in the preferences, and the different layouts are designed for different development styles and for, in many respects, for different origins of where, where you might come from. The default layout gives you the product, the project view, oh, laser. The project view on the left, and then a detail view on the right, and then an editor window slides up to show your, your edit text. It gives you most of the tools you want in one window, but you will often open other windows for specific tasks such as editing and debugging. There's a condensed layout, which is more familiar to those of you who use Code Warrior, where your project is in one window, and then editing, building, and debugging, and finding all happen in separate windows. But if you come from a more all-in-one environment where you expect everything to be in one window all the time, there's the all-in-one layout where your project and your detail and your editor are all in the same window and then you switch pages with the page button up here to go to debugging or to building. Pick the layout you want. We will be using the default layout in the demo, but most of the things that we're showing today work equally well in all layouts. So when you start putting together a project in Xcode, you do it in what's called the groups and files view. This is where your headers and source files go, and you can group them together in these um, folder-like groups to organize them. There are really two things here. One is the project membership up here, and two is a bunch of smart groups down there. The smart groups are much like smart groups in iTunes or iMovie or in another i application. They give you quick reference to certain kinds of things. For example, a smart group at the bottom called Project Symbols shows you a list of all of the classes and methods and uh, macros defined in your program. It's essentially uh, a flattened version of the project index. It's very useful to use these smart groups for navigation. You'll spend most of your time in the editor, whether the editor is in a separate window or whether it's embedded in your default or all-in-one view, the editor works the same. It's a source code editor, it does automatic indentation, it does syntax coloring. You'll see more advanced features of the Leopard Xcode editor in this afternoon's session. We're just going to show you the basic one that's currently in 2.3 and 2.4. If you're doing an application with the graphic user interface, you will be using Interface Builder. Most of your projects will come with default interface files called nib files. You double click those and you launch a separate application called Interface Builder and you use it to design your graphic user interface and then wire it up to your source code. <laughs> 